The common herbicide dicamba has been used for over 50 years to control dicot weeds. Today, the dicamba-resistant soybean cultivars, known as Roundup Ready to Extend Soybean, allow higher dicamba doses to be used for weed control in fields that are planted with those types of soybean cultivars. Even though this improves weed control, it also increases the risk of low-dose drift of dicamba onto fields that contain non-dicamba-resistant soybean cultivars. Although soybeans are very sensitive to dicamba, this synthetic auxin only affects soybean leaflets that are still undergoing cell division. Because of this, Nebraska Emeritus Professor Jim Speck says that producers are able to use a forensic strategy to help determine when soybean plants were affected by this herbicide. To learn more about this strategy, we met with Jim Monday morning and began by asking him for more information about synthetic auxins. Synthetic auxins are um, manufactured uh, versions of the auxins that are naturally found in plants. And dicamba and 2,4-D are the two major ones that are used in a lot of cropland. Uh, they can now be used on soybean uh, because of the new um, either uh, dicamba resistant or 2,4-D resistant soybeans that have been offered by the commercial seed industry. Both of those are, uh, uh, chemicals uh, act on dicot weeds and also dicots like soybeans that don't have tolerance. Uh, we'll talk about dicamba today mostly because the 2,4-D uh, versions are not readily available yet. So dicamba will injure plants pretty severely if used at a regular dose, and, but at low doses can also you have off-target drift that can injure non-dicamba resistant soybeans. Soybeans are very sensitive to dicamba. However, this synthetic auxin only affects dicot leaflet regions that are still undergoing cell division. Therefore, any fully developed leaflets will not be impacted by dicamba. Okay, soybeans grow in, uh, once they get past uh, the, what we call the V1 stage, when the first trifolia is just starting to unroll, you get a new nodal leaflet trifoliate every 3.7 days in soybeans, no matter where you are in Nebraska and what maturity group you're, you're growing. So what you can know is that's kind of a historical track of time, development time, that you can use to your advantage in making forensic analysis of any disease or thing you found with a specific leaf. Throughout a leaflet's development, cell division occurs in different locations of the leaflet margin. In almost developed leaflets, the cell division will have finished along the majority of the leaflet margins except at the leaflet tip. And for very young leaflets, cell division occurs along the entire circumference of the leaflet margin. This system of development allows producers to use a forensic strategy that will tell them when dicamba exposure likely occurred. To properly estimate the occurrence, Jim uses the Fair and Cavanis 1977 staging system. Okay, this is a famous publication in 1977 in which the authors developed a way to score soybeans. They start with the zero node being the cotyledonary node, and the next one is the two unifoliate nodes that come out. That's node one, and then every node thereafter is a trifoliate. And again, from that node one on up, it's every 3.7 days. To further understand how to forensically estimate dicamba exposure on soybean plants, we asked Jim to demonstrate how to properly assess the plant. By the way, this uh, infield leaf counting method was developed by uh, Jenny Reese, uh, the, the excellent extension uh, uh, educator out in York and Seward County. So I'd like to give credit for this to Jenny. Okay, so they can go out to the field and they can look at the plant. They may spot dicamba leaf tip injury, which is classic dicamba in which the leaf tips are shortened in like a drawstring, you know, when you drawstring a bag or it'll pinch there. And so you find that. So you look up and down the plant and you can see the first one that shows that is probably this one right here, which is located here. So that was when the dicamba spray incident occurred. So if you count from the bottom, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and this one's six, that means it was sprayed when it was near V6. And so you count on up to get to the day, this is V8 up there. So subtract uh, six from eight and you have two. So two times 3.7 days for each of these nodes is about a week ago, right? And so you know then that the dicamba spray on this plant, given that you're looking at it here today, was about seven, eight days ago. 
in development time. Now, if you want to know about calendar day time, you have to go to a crop model or whatever, like soy sim, which is embedded in soy water. Producers can use that to track when that occurred based on their planting date and their mat variety maturity group, and they can figure the calendar date. By using a crop model like soy sim, soybean producers will be able to receive a translation of a VN stage in crop development time to a calendar date of that VN stage occurrence. Well, soy sim is a little bit difficult for most lay people to use, but soy water is a, is a Nebraska soybean board funded project that will project crop development stage if you give it the planting date and the uh, maturity group. So you can go there and put those two things into your soy water input. It's online, available for free. And then you can, they'll tell you what date this node was present at, <laughs> on calendar date wise. Mm -hmm.